Hello everyone, Fluffy here, uh, back to you with a cooking mukbang, and uh, I haven't cooked breakfast for y'all yet, and somebody had suggested breakfast, and I have been wanting to do this for a while, I don't remember if you, uh, I think it was back at the old house, uh, that I was saying I had something in mind uh, to make, and um, uh, my daughter had cleaned up bread basket and threw away the item that I wanted to use, well, this is the thing I wanted to make, and what I'm making today is migas, and it is a Mexican breakfast dish. So uh, I'll explain it as we go along. This is my second try at the beginning because um, I'm still learning this grill, and for some reason, I'm using this grill even when I'm not cooking. Last night, I... Um, Went back after I made the pork bagogi and it tasted so good, especially the leftovers, that the last time I went to Omar, I had bought me another container and I didn't cook it and or eat it in front of the camera because it was just been so recent that I made it. And so I've been cooking with this and I had it kind of, I didn't have it turned on, I mean off, and so it wouldn't start. And I was like panicking going, oh my God, I, I ruined it already. So... I don't burn myself. So what we're going to start with is a little bit of oil. It's corn oil. I always use corn oil or um, extra virgin olive oil, but I just figured it would change the taste. And some butter. Now I always usually try to combine, this is not the Irish butter, but I usually try to combine butter with oil because then you don't burn it unless of course you're wanting to make brown butter apparently brown butter tastes really good and I learned that on Food Network because before when I would make brown butter I always felt like it was burnt and I dumped it out and started over but apparently they have it in frou-frou uh, restaurants <laughs> go figure yeah. now everybody you know, changes their migas or, or adds different things into their recipe, but basically the base for migas is onions and corn tortillas. Um, now, and I'm just putting in some white onions. I always love white onions. Um, in migas, the, the, the goal for regular migas is to fry your corn tortillas and make them crispy. They even suggest that you can use um, tortilla chips in here, but I'm the type that if I want crunchy tortilla chips in my breakfast, um, then I might as well just uh, eat chilaquillas. So then you just, uh, some people slice it, I just kind of tear it into pieces. So me, I want to kind of get them fried to get that fried taste, but I'm not going to crisp them. I like them, um, I like them soft because I just want the taste. And um, I kind of want them soft like uh, gorditas con chicharron, which is a gordita and it's with pig skins and they stew it and it's soft. And let me tell you, that is awesome. I usually uh, eat them when I eat them. I don't make them here because I don't know how to make gorditas. Enough! Now, they've been all right all day long. And I don't have the doors open. They are shut. Been having the doors shut the last few days, number one, because it's been hot and I've been kind of fatigued. And I don't know if it's the heat that's getting to me. So that's why I kind of took the weekend off, y'all. I appreciate you hanging in with me and being patient and allowing that for me. Okay. The corn tortillas are getting that fried look without getting too crispy. <clears throat> Excuse me, of course the eggs are going to take care of that. I want to add some ham to mine and all, oh, get out of there, cheese is not tight. And all this is, is a smoked ham lunch meat. I, I prefer smoked ham over honey ham. Don't really like the sweet taste of uh, honey ham. And while that's going, I will season my eggs to see them. Black pepper. 
forgot to put black pepper on my list. I forgot dog food. I did that big shop and I forgot dog food. So of course you have to spend $30. So I bought dog food and then of course while I was there, they reminded me of stuff I ate before. <laughs> $70 later that I didn't really have to spend. Okay, so I couldn't see if it's getting a little too crisp in there. So, added a little water. I know, don't gross out. I thought it was crazy too. But somebody told me a little water makes them fluffier than milk. And ever since then, I rarely do milk. Getting a little air in there. Um, there is a restaurant in San Antonio. It's in the market. Um, some of y'all know um, views. I know you know where that is. I think you've talked about spending time in Texas. And anybody who spent time in Texas has gone to the San Antonio Market Square. Okay. Now that the, um, this is going quicker than I thought because of this type of grill. I like to put fresh tomato. I just want to heat the tomatoes through. Good, yeah. This is the middle. I'm waiting, ready for my close-up. the rest of the cheese. So I didn't want it to look like just a big lump of cheese. And there's a few tomatoes I forgot, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick them in there, please and not want not. Yeah. Damn, I don't like my eggs tied hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And there you have me guys. Not difficult, not difficult at all. And then I have some of my salsa I'm going to put on top. Shocker. Milk. I tell you, I didn't, my daughter, she can get addicted to um, sodas and stuff. She tries to shut, <clears throat> excuse me, she tries to cut down, and when she goes out of town, she's better at it. Um, but uh, I'm really lucky in that she loves milk. And matter of fact, she uh, has milk a lot more often than I do. She'll just kind of take glass to bed or she'll have it with a meal. So I'm kind of lucky that she likes milk.
Y'all, oh, this is freaking hot. <laughs> it's just been over flame, doofus. Mm. Mm. These corn tortillas are fabulous. Fabulous in here. I've had um, chicharron, chicharron, amigas, where instead of putting the um, corn tortillas, you put in um, pork rinds, but you can't put it in, put them in at the same time that you would normally start off the migas, which is the onions and the um, corn tortillas. You kind of have to put them in, unless you want them crunchy. Um, me, I like them soft, like in the gordita. And um, so I put them in like around the time I would put the tomatoes. Give you a shot of what my bite looks like. See the corn tortilla? Yeah. Yum. Yeah. Y'all. My nephew has a big old garden um, this year, and again, and he lives next to my mom, which uh, my mother's determined to live on her own for as long as possible, so I'm kind of glad that he lives next door to her, but um, that he has a big yard and a backyard because it's a house that they're renting. And he gave me some cucumbers. Oh, I had some for breakfast this morning when I first got up. It was so good. With just a little salt. steam. I wouldn't lie when I say it was hot. <laughs> Y'all, tonight I am determined to get our neighbor's trash out and my trash out because mine's getting kind of full. Thank you Fluffy Chocolate again for reminding me this morning. I should not forget. And then I have nobody to blame but myself. <laughs> of course I only had myself blamed last time but I wanted to blame y'all. I don't think, I watched my other video and I did not tell you my cereal story. And I don't have them because I gave them to my mom because she's always buying me stuff and she likes new stuff. Um, back in my earlier videos, you saw me with the rectangle uh, plates, styrofoam plates. I really like those and haven't been able to find them. Of course, I haven't gone back into them. The Walmart I found them in. Um, but I told you I'd found those big old bowls. But if I turned that bowl upside down here, the styrofoam, it would probably just fill the whole inside. So um, one night I had that full of cereal. And I was real careful, went to the TV tray. And I stick the laptop kind of at an angle and then put the bowl right here. And remember I was complaining about all the flies I'm, back, I'm down to only one or two because, like I told you, because of the heat, I've had the door closed, so no more have gone in. And I've been on a search and destroy mission. <laughs> There's one flying around, but I waved the towel once or twice, and it's keeping its distance. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, the milk with the migas. Mm. Um, so, it ha you know, all styrofoam plates have that little lip. Well, this, these bowls do too. 
So I had it right here. I always spill a couple of drops, much to the dog's joy. I was real careful. I got it to the TV tray. Perfect. So I'm eating, and I thought, should I mukbang? No, because I've already done cereal. It's kind of boring, and I almost just like I have a hole in my lip because I kept dropping it. So I didn't. So I was there eating, and these flies, and they bug me more when I'm on that side because of the light. Anyway, excuse me. So, as being real lucky, they were kind of staying away, and then all of a sudden, one surprised me and flew past me, and without thinking, I went to shush it out of my face. And when I went like that, it hit the lip and knocked it over, all down me, all down my leg, all on the floor. I was like, oh my God. It, I laughed. I laughed for 10 minutes, because all the dogs, when I go swat and stuff, they think they're in trouble. Because they're rescue, so they're always a little skittish. They've gotten better since they've been with us, but still. And it was real quiet in the house. And I actually think I had the TV muted because I was watching YouTube videos. I don't always watch them on the TV because I can't comment if I watch them on the TV. So it was really quiet. So all of a sudden, I hit that thing and the dogs scattered and they came back. I said, go for it, dogs. And then I had cereal too. It was just hilarious. So when I did it with the pizza container, I was like, oh my God, this is too hilarious. I can't believe I didn't tell them this. Hmm. I did three eggs, by the way. This was enough for three eggs and I used two corn tortillas. And I diced up half a small onion. And one fresh Roma tomato. I really like Roma tomatoes, y'all. If you're ever wondering about, you can't ever get fresh tomatoes when summer's over and when their season's over. Roma tomatoes keep their natural, fresh flavor. You know, they're, I'm sure they're hothouse, but for some reason, they're the most tomato-y tasting uh, tomatoes in the wintertime. Well, I just use them all year long. Sometimes the daughter will get a good price on some steak tomatoes or stuff from Aldi, which I really haven't been in forever. <laughs> she should go with my mom on Sunday. Y'all, Wednesday, I can't wait. Two days. Can't wait. I'll try to do as many monk bonds as long as the quality doesn't suffer between now and Wednesday because I may try to do a monk bonk early Wednesday and then if not, I won't be filming Wednesday and then probably not Thursday. It'll be kind of haphazard unless she's like, hey, Mom, why don't you, I'm making a pretty dinner. Why don't you mukbang it? Because she's done that before. So, and I'm sure y'all will understand why. The kids have been gone for two months. And like I said, I don't know where she's going next. Her dog's been so lonely. I'm hoping she can take her little doggy with her. It was such short notice last time. She just couldn't call. And then she told me, Mom, it didn't matter. They were going to be really expensive anyway. So if there's enough of her people going out of town with her, just all depends on the projects they're working on. The hotels will cut them a break. Hang on, y'all. Be right back. All right, I'm back. The sneezing got me to have to blow my nose. And that's just gross on film. If I can avoid it, I do. Anyway. Um. Did you see my boo-boo? Boo-boo, this has got bacani sauce in it. I can't give you none. Can I give you any? No. I figured out 
a way, I'm hoping, to keep Big Dog from getting Little Dog's food while I'm gone because the other day, I meant to tell y'all, I came back and there was yet another cup, Little Caesar's cup, broken into on the kitchen, on the living room floor. But my basket that I used to haphazardly set this up um, was like way back. So I don't know how she would have gotten it. So we have a small dried dog food container that we were putting the dried dog food in, but, but the bags are so big, you, could, you wouldn't use the whole thing in there. So where would you store the big bag? Don't want to put it in the garage so it doesn't get stale. Anyway, it's just been sitting here in between the dog food. Empty. So I'm sitting there one night, and especially after that last dog food one. And, um. Then I thought, you know what? I wonder. It's by the dog's dog bowls. So I thought, I'm going to store them in there and see what happens. So I just did it because I, I bought new dog food and I had it sitting around here. So I had to straighten up before I could film. No, I have a lot to do before the kid gets home. Corn tortillas are a little crisp, and they're okay. I just prefer them softer, but and true me guys, you're supposed to get them crispy. Chilaquiles is um the green verde sauce, and you dip your tortilla chips in it, and then you stick eggs on top of it. Those are supposed to be crunchy. So, not really fond of chilaquiles. I'd rather have them, guys. Mm. Restaurant. See, I think I went other places. In the San Antonio Market Square is called Mitieras. When we're in town, we try to have breakfast there at least once. Normally, I go back and forth between their menudo for breakfast, menudo for some of y'all, and um, or their migas. Now, eight times out of ten, it's usually the um. Tomato juice I have just sitting on the cutting board. Um, and this the cutest little coffee cup, ceramic. It's got that lid like to go cups for coffee. Um, we'll go there for breakfast, and they have a Mexican bakery there. Um, for lunch or dinner, which is there. Sister, um, restaurant, they have the best fajitas in the universe. Now, I used to say, if we go, we're going to eat there at least once so I can get my fajitas. But y'all, I don't mean to sound cheap, but the prices, no. I'm like, nah, I will not be having fajitas today. Outrageous. It's a tourist restaurant, so. But. Views and Mr. Views. Bitieras, the owners, that family has cornered the market on the market. You know the back door into Bitieras where they have that little parking lot? And if you're staring at it, the entrance to the right that gets you into the actual market where that statue of the lady uh, sitting cross-legged that corner shop is now a taqueria and bar that those owners of Michiadas and La Margaritas own and they were brilliant because the bar park sits out into the sidewalk so you don't go in to drink so I guess if anybody gets drunk they don't have to go far to their car they don't break anything <laughs> And I don't remember the name because we, me and my mother uh, and my daughter drove down to uh, San Antonio just for lunch and to pick up the pastries from there. 
and we had lunch at La Margaritas, and that's when I discovered how much the, um, the fajitas cost now. But I thought you'd find that interesting. Because like I said, if anybody visits, stays, whatever in Texas, you, you will have ended up at the Market Square in San Antonio. And if y'all have it, and you come to Texas, that's a place that you need to stop by. That and the Riverwalk, because those places are awesome. Uh, so anyway, wow, that was quick. Uh, it was so delicious. I had bought me another package of eggs, and I kept thinking, why am I buying another package, and it's been a while since I've eaten eggs. And I kept going, oh, I want to make migas. I want to make migas. But then I thought, you know, I thought of the other stuff, and oh, I want to do the couscous, and oh, I want to do... I said, you know what? I have ham. I have cheese. <laughs> I bought a food processor for only like 25 bucks on Amazon. It's the kind you see on Food Network where you click it in and it's got the blade. And then you have that thingy that you shove down. Anyway, they make dough on it. It's on every show. I bought one of those because I've always wanted to have it. Well, this one comes with that chopping blade. But it also comes with a slicing blade, the flat blade that sits on top, and a shredding blade. And I remember... Who was it? I think it was the Pioneer Woman that was talking about already shredded cheese, has some kind of waxy, some kind of film on it, uh, which is what keeps the cheese from clumping up together. So she always takes solid blocks and shreds it herself. Of course, she shows herself using the old-fashioned shredder. Now, I don't know if she does that in real life or not. She seems down to earth, so it seems like she does. But she said that because of the waxy coating, sometimes it takes a little longer for cheese to melt and such and such. And so it's healthier. And I then I saw an article on Facebook that showed the back of the package, and I meant to read it before I threw the bag away, that it's a carcinogen, whatever they use. Now, this is from Food for, food for Medicine, Natural Medicine or something. Um, so I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but that kind of kind of had me afraid. And so have y'all ever, ever had the Tillamook? brand of cheese. It's a medium cheddar. It comes in a block. It's like eight bucks and I've been cutting on that and having that as a snack and stuff uh, in between meals and things when I want to eat instead of trying to eat crap all the time. Uh, so anyway, uh, I finally got it out. We've been in the house two months. So that was our housewarming gift uh, for ourselves. I finally got it out and I used it. Oh my god, I love that sucker. I keep thinking. Oh. And so I had about uh, just under half a block left so I shredded all that up and put it in a big container that's what was in here and then I had bought a new block because I'm going to try to keep a block a uh, closed block in the fridge at all times so we can just shred it up and it did melt pretty quick in here and I mean just real quick uh, in here so I really like that and well, I still have a bag, bag of mozzarella um, that I had bought because I can't seem to find the fake mozzarella in the block. I mean, the true mozzarella is those balls, and I would love to have them, but they're so expensive. So that'll be if we have bruschetta, or I might buy a ball, or convince my daughter to get a ball of it, uh, but so that I can shred the block of mozzarella up too. So uh, anyway, enough of the cooking show. <laughs> cooking science. <laughs> Sound like Alton Brown. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so, uh, y'all, 800 and I think it said six. I know I, I went over the 800 mark. I thank you all who put me over the top. I thank you all down to the first couple that were with me um, for the first time. I really, really um, appreciate it. Uh, so, if you would please like, uh, I guess it helps with my popularity. Uh, you know, do some naughty things with that uh, like button. Just don't tell me what you did. Just don't tell me. <laughs> don't want to know. <laughs> but I, I really have a lot of appreciation for y'all. I really, really do. Um, I never thought that I'd get this big. I had hoped, uh, and I hope that uh, continuing to watch me and hear about my day-to-day -day and the struggles that I have and the triumphs that I have, uh, because chronic, Ill and chronic illness is no joke. It really isn't. Anywhere from fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, lupus. I mean, it's it's just no joke. So I, I hope I offer you some comfort. You certainly offer me comfort. You keep me moving by continuing to do these mukbangs because I have to force myself to do stuff. And just like cooking, you know, I have to go a few extra steps. It exhausts me, but I keep moving. It's been helping. So, um Anyway, uh, God bless you. Positive vibes out to each and every one of you. Remember to always be kind 
and I will talk to y'all real soon. Bye.